Or how do you all grab yourself a beer? It's time for some part of Excel discussion. Uh, today we had the big reveal of the 3.15 expansion. Uh, and one of the things that's sort of not really being discussed very much is the new mechanic Ward. Ward is a defensive alternative to armor, evasion, energy shield, and the like. And what I want to do is as much of a deep dive as we can at this early stage into how it works, uh, why it might be good, uh, and what sorts of builds would not want to use it as well. So firstly, uh, Ward is something that's introduced in, only in content from the Expedition Encounters. Uh, and so these treasures include unique items and base types that introduce a new defensive mechanic called Ward. When you're hit, your Ward is completely depleted and it reduces the damage dealt to you by that amount. A few seconds later, your Ward replenishes itself and you're protected from the next hit. And so you can see how superficially this looks very similar to Energy Shield. Uh, you know, if you're uh, sort of just only occasionally taking hits, let's imagine a world where every monster that hit hit for 2,000 damage and you've got 4,000 life and 1,500 energy shield. You get hit, uh, you take 2,000 damage, you go to 3,500 life and zero energy shield. And then a few seconds later, your energy shield's replenished itself and you're back ready to take the next big hit. However, Ward is somewhat different in that Ward, it seems to have larger numbers than energy shield does, and I'll get into how we know that later. Uh, but also, it seems that, oh, well, it appears that if you take a small hit, your ward is entirely consumed on that hit. So, what you want is builds that don't take many hits and that don't have very many uh, hit points overall. Uh, so, builds that can't take a big hit and live, but that don't often take those big hits. And so, ward is going to play at its absolute strongest in conjunction with evasion, dodge, or block. Uh, and probably dodge being the easiest of these to scale or block. Uh, dodge and block will be the ones that will perform best, I believe. We're going to have to see how it works in practice. We're also going to see whether ward is available on shields or not. Uh, I assume it will be, but that is not confirmed yet. So, ward has uh, ward is turned off for a few seconds after you hit. I believe it to be five seconds, but we haven't had this confirmed yet. So, uh, just assume it's a few seconds for the moment. We don't know the exact details. And you can speed that up via the use of specific unique items, uh, like this Faith Guard Runic Helm, which seems like it'd be a pretty good item early on for use on a build that wants to use Ward, uh, but that probably doesn't seem like it will scale that well to endgame. Although I could be wrong there. We'll kind of have to test that one out in practice uh, once we've got all the information. Uh, you'll notice I'm mostly skipping over Cadigan's Crown. That's not really a defensive item. This is one of those all offense, uh, one of those all offense weapon, oh, sorry, items that uh, just happens to have a little bit of uh, ward on it. But we'll come back to that when we're talking about the numbers on ward. So, ward has no interaction with damage over time. Uh, this is a big, di a big difference from energy shield, and I would argue that it is a situation in which ward is better than energy shield. So energy shield, for instance, is pretty much ruined as a defensive layer if you are running blood rage, because you are dealing damage over time to yourself. On the flip side, uh, with ward, uh, you will be able to have uh, you will be able to take damage over time, uh, and that will have no interaction with ward, and then you'll still have your life pool as well as your ward to so, uh, to protect you from any big hits. It also has no known interaction with chaos damage. Energy shield can't protect you from chaos damage. Ward is believed to be able to protect you from chaos damage, although we'll have to get that confirmed as well. So, the numbers on ward items seem higher than comparable energy shield bases. You see here that these runic greaves have 34% increased ward, and by doing a little bit of maths, was able to ascertain that the base ward on these, if they didn't have that mod, would be 21. So if you just took a scoured set of runic greaves, it would have 21 ward on it. Uh, now that's a required level 28 set of boots, and I had a look at the other uh, energy shield boots that are of comparable levels, and were there to be a required level 28 set of boots, there isn't, but were there to be one, it would probably have 19, 18, oh, it would have 18, 19, or 20 energy shield, but probably 19. And so on that basis, uh, I'm inclined to think that the lower tier bases uh, have slightly more ward than the comparable energy shield base. However, when we have a look at uh, Cadigan's crown here, you'll see it has 137 ward on it. Uh, this is a required level 68 item, so the most comparable uh, comparison in energy shield helmets is the hubris circlet. The hubris circlet is required level 69 and has a 76 base energy shield. So you can see here that ward scales up quite a lot higher than energy shield at endgame. 
What we don't know is how well the mods that affect Ward scale up over time. So with Energy Shield, uh, let's say that you are trying to roll Sorcerer Boots to have high Energy Shield, uh, you would want to have two rolls on them, one being a high flat Energy Shield roll, uh, and the other one being a high Energy Shield percentage roll. We don't know whether those are going to exist in comparable numbers for Ward or not. However, I'm assuming they will. Uh, if it turns out that I'm wrong, then this part of the video will just end up being incorrect. Uh, based on that assumption, I'm expecting that you'll be able to get something like 50 to 60% more ward on your items uh, than you can get energy shield. And that's going to be pretty significant. So where is, where is ward going to perform poorly? I think in content like Blighted Maps, we take lots and lots of tiny hits uh, or on builds that deal uh, small amounts of self-damage. So for instance, the new Juggernaut themed skill, uh, I can't think of its name, but the one that inflicts trauma stacks on yourself, uh, you're just going to end up wrecking your own ward really quickly there. Heartbound Loop is another example of uh, an item that you would never want to use in conjunction with ward effects. Here, all of these small hits that you're suffering will waste your ward and it won't be available when you need it. Where is it great? Uh, it is great against bosses that hit seldom but hit hard. And the one that comes to mind most uh, most uh, explicitly is all the Crystal King, uh, who has very small, uh, very um, very infrequent attacks that do devastating amounts of damage. Uh, so it's also really good on builds that are vulnerable to being one shot, but that shrug off most hits without taking any damage at all. Uh, so this would be through mechanics like dodge, like evasion, like block, uh, probabilistic defenses and especially on builds that might like an energy shield buffer as extra effective hit points, but the use mechanics like acrobatics, immortal ambition, or blood rage uh, with its self damage that don't work well with energy shield. Now, a little thought experiment that I came up with, how good is a trillion points of ward compared to the same amount of armor, the same amount of evasion, or the same amount of energy shield? And I think you gotta say that a, a trillion points of energy shield is absolute immunity, absolute god mode. You can, you know, you can't be killed with that. A trillion points of armor is not quite physical damage immunity uh, because of the, the specifics of the armor formula, but it is 90% physical damage reduction. A trillion points of evasion means that you are evasion capped, and so you're only hit a few percent of the time. Uh, and a trillion points of ward is nothing like that. It is much weaker. So that's something that I just thought of as a bit of a thought experiment to give a sense that ward is... A uh, ward is not something that you necessarily want to go all in on, and you certainly don't rely on it as your only defensive layer. You want to use it alongside something else, and that's why I think you want to be using it alongside dodge, evasion, uh, or block. So, uh, next question is, how do you scale it? So, firstly, presumably the mod 100% increased global defenses, which is found on grasping males and is also found on the unique chest uh, skin of the loyal or skin of the lords, uh, presumably this will work on ward. That is not confirmed yet, so don't build around, uh, don't design a build around it. Just work on the assumption that it it's probably will work. Uh, and so you may wish to use these sorts of uh, bases in conjunction in conjunction with skin of the lords uh, or skin of the loyal. Uh, next up, you have the unique helm faith guard, which causes energy shield increases and reductions to maximum energy shield to instead apply to ward. Now I could be reading this wrongly. But I read this as applying both to percentage increases to energy shield that you source perhaps from the passive tree uh, or from specific items like the crown of the inward eye. Uh, but also I read this to apply to things like the implicit mod on a crystal belt, the, the inherent local energy shield. The wording of the energy shield on a crystal belt simply says plus, well, let's say you've got a roll of 80, plus 80 maximum energy shield. And so I personally read that, that this essentially converts your energy shield into ward. We're gonna to have to see how this works in practice, uh, but this faith guard seems like an interesting way of scaling, of scaling ward up to really high levels. Whether it's worth it or not is going to be something that comes down to what other sources of ward there are. There will without a doubt be lots of other new items that have not yet been revealed that will also help with this too. But what's really essential is going to be flat plus ward modifiers on items. We don't know if these exist yet. We haven't seen any examples of it. Uh, if they do though, then that's something that's likely to make ward quite a bit better. Anyways, uh, so my final thoughts here are that if you were thinking of playing a raider 
uh, then you should definitely consider this, this ward mechanic. If you were thinking of playing a gladiator uh, with max block, you should definitely consider playing around with this ward mechanic as well. Uh, on a lot of other builds, I'm less inclined to suggest going for it unless the numbers are extraordinary. But that's just my opinion. If you've got comments or questions, definitely fire away below. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to leave it there. And I think it's about time for me to start getting on to uh, POE Royale and see how I see how bad I am at that now. So yeah, fire away with comments and questions and may your Valorbs have interesting results.